First year's woman batter Laura Volfart made her national debut at just 16 years old. She helped propel the country to a historic appearance in a Cricket World Cup final on home soil in Cape Town back in February. And she's currently the world's second best ODI batter. She's also the latest recruit to join retired and active sports people at the Laureus Sport for Good Foundation, South Africa. She joins us now from Cape Town. A very good evening and welcome to Newsroom Africa. Can you just tell us about that call that you got to get involved with Laureus? Hi, um, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, very special. Never something that I thought I would be doing at this stage in my career. Um, I always thought it was something that would present itself possibly after my career. Um, so to be able to get in, involved with such an amazing organization is, is really special and, and I'm excited for the journey ahead with Laureus. Yeah, what are you hoping to achieve with the foundation? Well, I think the the whole mentality of the foundation is just to, to use sport to do good. And I think me being um, given all of these opportunities that I've had through cricket and, and to use the platform that I have together with Laureus to, to help make a social changes uh, through cricket and through sports. So, yeah, very excited. So there's a lot of social ills that the foundation looks at trying to use sport to have a positive impact. Is there one social ill in particular that uh, you've got an interest in? Um, I'm just very keen to help out wherever I can. Um, I had my first official activation with them a couple of days ago and, and we went to visit Zip Zap Circus in Cape Town. Um, and it was really special just to meet all of the kids and the performers and, and to see what these people do on a day to day basis. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very open to supporting whatever I can and very excited. In 2016, you became the youngest centurion, male or female, for South Africa and international cricket. Uh, you also named Women's newcomer of the year at the Cricket South Africa annual awards less than a year later. What does it take to be this good and to achieve things so early? Um, I guess being a young player growing up, you don't really think about it in that sort of way. Um, I just really enjoy my cricket and I really enjoy my batting. So growing up, I just try to play as much cricket as, as I could. Um, and I guess that's kind of still what I'm doing today. Uh, very fortunate to, to have this amazing career and this amazing job. So, yeah, just enjoying every step of the way. After the World Cup, uh, there was a bit of a break, but you managed to play some of the women's IPL. What was that experience like? Very cool experience. I think uh, very special for women's cricket um, to have such a big, high-profile tournament. Um, and to, to be invited, I was a replacement player, so didn't expect to go, but to be invited halfway through was, was incredible, and to be able to mix with some of the best cricketers in the world was very special. Are you quite eager to get back into the green and gold, though? Yes, uh, I'm enjoying our time off at home, uh, getting in the nets a bit and working on some specifics, um, but yeah, after that, keen to get back to some game time. The team of a tour of Australia coming up in January. It includes a test. How do you feel about a test cricket for women? I am so excited for that test match. Um, it'll be my second one ever. We had the one in England last year. So, yeah, I can't wait. I think it's, it's at the Wacker as well, which is quite iconic for test cricket in Australia. So it's going to be a, a very exciting challenge. And, yeah, can't wait to take it on. How do you think uh, women's cricket can maybe take advantage or how do you think they move forward? Because uh, there's not that many tests available on, on the international stage for, uh, for test cricket for women. Uh, but there's also becoming diminishing uh, opportunities for, for men. Do you see women's test cricket growing or do you feel that uh, it'll still remain like this? I really hope we get some more. Um, it's a format that I personally really enjoy, and I think it's something that my game is quite suited to. Um, I enjoy the format that we will be playing in Australia, which is the, the multi-format series with the T20s, ODIs, and the Test match, and then you kind of get points for all of those games and have an overall winner at the end. Um, so I don't see why they can do that with most bilaterals that we play, just, just add a Test match to the end. Um, yeah, I really would hope that we have more test cricket because I think it's it's the ultimate form of the game and I really love it. Women's sport, women's cricket in particular, in no short part uh, considering what you guys managed to do for South Africa on home soil in a T20 World Cup, has really brought the game front and centre. Being in the mix right in the heart of it, how do you view the fact that you've now got many more people speaking about women's sport and women's cricket in particular? 
yeah, it was an incredible tournament for us uh, to be able to play at Newlands and in front of my friends and my family and being from Cape Town to be able to play a World Cup final there is something that I'll definitely never forget. Um, I'm definitely feeling a lot more attention around the women's game in Cape Town and in South Africa in general. Um, I think the numbers, if you look at the numbers of the viewers for that game, they, it shot through the roof for South Africa. So it's really nice to see that, that people and local South Africans are supporting us and watching the games. Um, I really hope we can sort of capitalize on this now and push the game forward in South Africa. How much more added pressure does that put, however, on you as a player? Um, not too much. I guess it's something we've always been asking for is to, to be put on TV a bit more and to be given given grounds and bigger stadiums. So I can't complain about it now. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting, I think. To have a home crowd cheering you on, which is something we've almost never had, is, is really special and it really makes a big difference in the game. How will the team move forward with the big name retirements that we've had in the last couple of months? Shabnam Ishmael, Dineb Nika, Trisha Chetty. Yeah, obviously big losses for the team. Um, some of our most experienced players and some of our best players and in statistics wise. Um, but yeah, I think we, we have a good young group coming through. I think most of that group was um, on display in the World Cup final. So at the core of our group still remains the same, uh, which is very exciting. And yeah, hopefully we can use this winter to, to build on some, uh, well, a good foundation and hopefully yeah, come back all guns blazing when the season starts again. Laura, with what happened before the World Cup, how did you guys manage that with Dene Fanica not being a part of the team and the fitness standards for the team being put into sharp focus? Yeah, I think when it all happened, we were in the middle of a series. So I think every player just tried to stay as, stay as focused as they could on, on that series in particular. Um, yeah, we had games in and out of that week. So I just tried to focus on the games and not get too involved in behind the scenes and yeah, that was basically it. Laura Volfart, thank you so much for chatting to us here on Newsroom Africa.